struggling with uh, Palmer amaranth. Um, it was costing huge amounts of money to control just that single weed, so we had to come up with some other way to combat it besides weeds and, I mean, uh, chemistry and tillage. Um, so I started looking on the internet for, you know, cultural practices, things that people are doing in other parts of the country, and I came across a guy on YouTube that was growing organic pumpkins and uh, no tillage, no herbicides. His only tool to control weeds was cereal rye. So I investigated what cereal rye even was and we planted 300 acres on the farm. That was in uh, fall of 2009. So our first year with cover crops was uh, spring of 2010, planting into them and that's how we started. I found a guy on YouTube. We try to put cover crops on every acre. Uh, with every cash crop, uh, whether that's soybeans, cotton, corn, rice, in, anything we can. Uh, we try to be 100% covered all the time. Since we've been doing it, we've found so many additional benefits that, you know, I could name several primary reasons we use them now that I didn't even think of in the beginning. Uh, you know, uh, organic matter increases, soil aggr aggregates, uh, you know, just better soil structure, uh, increased water infiltration and holding capacity, um, diversity uh, for insects and uh, different microorganisms, you know, we're seeing reductions in insects and, uh, you know, insect pests and fungal diseases, bacterial blights, I mean, everything's just healthier. This is, I hear this all the time about Greenbridge being an issue and why you have to terminate cover crops a month ahead of time or two weeks ahead of time. It's just the only way to do it. The thought being any pest that's, you know, increases population in the green cover crop, once the cover crop's killed, if you don't leave adequate time for that pest to cycle out before your cash crop emerges, it's gonna move to your cash crop. So. What I have seen is there's an irrational fear of Green Bridge. So the bridge is not a one-way street. Uh, pests and diseases are not the only thing that travel that bridge. There's also you know, beneficial organisms of all kinds, uh, you know, inconsequential insects, you know, just a huge array of things that don't get any attention. In my experience doing this, as we've increased the diversity of our cover crop, we have increased the diversity of that insect population. But I am an entomologist and I see on average 50 either predator species combined with inconsequential insects to one pest, a ratio of 50 to one. Um, so in my mind, that's not a problem. I don't see any devastating effects coming from that. But I will say that's in a diverse cover crop mix. Um, I'm not planting soybeans into a bunch of Austrian winter peas. I'm not planting, you know, cotton into a straight field of vetch. So I could see in circumstances like that where it's a problem. Is what we've seen. The environment we're in right now in agriculture is pretty bleak. Uh, so everybody's looking for a way to cut costs. Mm -hmm. And if you can cut out all that tillage and, you know, and save on some irrigation in the next summer and, you know, reduce some applications for weeds because you've choked them out with shade, you know, those are all savings. So if you adopt the whole system like we have, um, you know, you, we want to be 100% no-till if possible, which in the south that's not possible every year you know we, we're having a wet fall here now so we're gonna have to do some tillage to clean up some ruts and things um, but if you can take that away and plant cover crops right behind the combine reuse your old beds you know maybe just clean the furrow just a very minimum disturbance system you know university figures have tillage pegged at you know $100 an acre 
on a typical row crop situation. Mm -hmm. So if you could reuse those beds just three out of five years, you know, you're gonna save $300 an acre over a five year period. Um, and one thing I hear about that is, well, you're gonna have to have more chemicals to, to terminate cover crops. Well, I can terminate almost all the cover crops I use with, you know, maybe two, two modes of action. Mm -hmm. um, before we were using them and we were fighting mare's tail, primrose, you know, hen bit, all these things, we were having to spray one time with three modes, maybe two times the first time with three modes and then another two mode shot. So we're actually using less chemistry to terminate, terminate cover crops than we were to terminate winter weeds. Uh, so economically, it's a net gain if you can cut tillage and your chemistry out of about you know, 100 to $120 an acre in a year uh, that you can add to your bottom line. It's pretty substantial. You know, Everybody's worried about how much cover crops cost, but when you weigh it against the things that you can remove, it, uh, they more than pay for themselves. I found that farming with cover crops is a lot easier than farming without them. Uh, once you figure out the system, figure out how many trips you can cut out, uh, it's, it's just a lot, you've got a lot more time to do other things on the farm, you know. Uh, when the tractors are rolling in February and March and spray rigs are rolling, we're just watching our covers grow. As far as time management, it's a lot simpler. Uh, now, the trick gets into, you know, how do you plant into a jungle of cover crops? How do you irrigate? Things like that. But once you figure those things out, it's 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 really pretty easy. You know, it's allowed us to farm the same amount of acres with less guys, less equipment, far fewer trips across the field. Um, and if you're a beginner, that's you know I would suggest doing that. Uh, keep your mixes simple and terminate ahead of time until you figure out what's going on, things to look for. You need to identify what your main goal is and, and hit that.